Welcome to another All for Poetry and Poetry for All session brought to you by Accelerated Literacy Learning. My name is yours truly, Lorraine Hatter, and I'm with you today. Um, and today I'm craving poems that rhyme. I know that we've been doing a great deal of work together looking at poems that paint pictures in our minds. We've been looking at poetry that um, helps us express our feelings. We've used our senses. And just recently, we did list poems. So I know we've been doing a great deal. But today we're going to begin um, a two-part session. One session will be today, and the next will be at the end of the week, exploring poems that rhyme. Um, and I know sometimes when we think about poems that rhyme, some of us may you know, get a bit um, nervous about it or um, think twice about writing them. So um, I'm going to show you some ways that we can together begin the first step, um, and that is as poets being really good observers and those who think about uh, what we're about to write. Um, and we're going to explore exactly what a rhyme is, what a rhyme is not, and we're going to look at patterns in poetry. And I think if we start doing those kinds of things, we are going to be um, more confident when we have to write our own poems. And by the end of today's session, your task will be um, to become um, a pattern detective. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a few minutes. So let's get started. Let's open our session as we traditionally do during this um, April Poetry Month. Let's start with a poem. And I want you to pay particular attention to this poem um, because it does rhyme. It does rhyme, and it's a lot of fun. Are you ready? Here we go. If you don't see it really well, um, perhaps later when you um, pause the video, you can zoom in on it. But it's called The Rope Rhyme, and it's written by Eloise Greenfield. Um, and I just want you to listen, um, listen to the fun when I'm reading it, and try to see if you can find some rhyme. Are you ready? Okay. The Rope Rhyme. Get set. Get ready. Jump right in. Bounce and kick and giggle and spin. Listen to the rope when it hits the ground. Listen to that clappity slappity sound. Jump right in when it tells you to. Come back down whatever you do. Count to a hundred. Count by ten. Start to count all over again. That's what jumping is all about. Get set. Get ready. Now jump right out. Is that fun? It's definitely fun for me. So that was the rope rhyme. Um, so when Eloise wrote this poem, she did look for rhyme. And I, I hope you heard some of the rhyme. Um, did you notice where the rhyme in this poem is found? Did you find the rhyme at the beginning of a stanza or at the beginning of a portion in the poem? Or did you find it in the middle? Or did you find it towards the end? And if you've guessed at the end, you're right. You're absolutely right. Words like in and spin do rhyme. You're right. And if we put them there in a little bubble. What else did you find that rhyme? Hmm. I bet. I bet that after um, I review this video, I'm going to find some predictions or some ideas about what you think rhyme. But if you're thinking about the word ground and sound, you're right. And if you're thinking about to and do, that's right. Ten and again. And that one is quite interesting. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. And then we have the word about and out. Look at those rhyming words. Okay? They all have something in common. Right? They all end with the same letters. Do they? One of, one of them do not. If you take a look at the word ten and again, ten ends with an E-N and again ends with an A-I-N. So, so the rhyming words can sound the same, but we can spell them differently. Okay? So the rhyme came at the end of each um, line in this particular poem, uh, in this particular poem, excuse me. So what would you say that this poem was fun? Would you say that this poem had some rhythm? 
And I wonder if you read this later, would you have the same sort of rhythm that I did? You may not. You may think of something else. And you know, as in poetry, anything is right. So I'm going to read this one more time and get ready. Maybe you can read with me if you can see it clearly. Okay? You can get up. You can dance it. You can drum it. You can move your hands with me as well. Let's just have some fun movement, right? So the rope poem by Eloise Greenfield. Get set, ready now, jump right in. Bounce and kick and giggle and spin. Listen to the rope when it hits the ground. Listen to that clappity slappity sound. Jump right up when it tells you to. Come back down whatever you do. Count to a hundred, count by ten. Start to count all over again. That's what jumping is all about. Get set, ready now, jump right out. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that rhyming poem. Let's begin to explore what a rhyme is. So a rhyme is when words sound the same at the end. And sometimes they end, they, of course they end with the same sound, and in these particular words I want you to look at how they're written. Okay? Mat, we're looking at the word mat and cat. I want to make sure you're seeing them. So you've got the word cat and mat, hen and ten, take and make, road and toad. These particular words rhyme. They're spelt the same way and they sound the same at the end. They end with the same letters. Okay. Can you think of other words that we can maybe um, find a rhyme for? So if we wrote the word, hmm, I'm looking at my cat laying there. So if I thought about the word pet, can you think of a word that rhymes with pet? I'm thinking of the word get. So I'm writing that on my index card. I'm, I'm, I'm having some words that I can use. So if we thought of the word dream, think of that word dream. I'm writing it down. Any, I, any words that you could think of that rhyme with dream? I can think about Lisa and Susan as we work together and we're a team. So we look at the word dream and team. Dream team. Or we can say that. So if we're looking at a word, let's think of the word stop. Can you think of a word that rhymes with stop? Yep. Pop. Right? So we just found some words that end with the same letters and they rhyme. Okay? Please look at how the letters, I've, I've put them in a different color so that you can see how they end the same. Okay? How else can we make a rhyme? Please look at these words. So if we look at the word train and we look at the word cane, they sound the same. They indeed do rhyme, but they don't, they're not spelt the same way. Okay. Cake and break, try and high, late and ate. Hmm. Okay. What about the word, can you think of more? Let's think of the word towel, beach towel. Towel. What can rhyme with towel? How about the word growl? Okay. Do one more. How about the word, hmm. Can anyone think of a word for bridge? And this one will have the same ending. Fridge. Okay, so words that rhyme, they sound the same, but they can end with different letters. And as a writer, you'll start observing that um, in the words that you brainstorm. Okay, so important things. They end the same and sound the same. They do not end the same way, but they do sound. They do not end with the same letters, but they do sound the same. Okay? 
It is not a rhyme. I know sometimes we think of words that start with the same sound like bat and bank and thank and that and coat and cold. Those are not rhyming words, okay? And words that even have the same middle sound? Nope, those are not rhyming words. So dream and clean, they sound, they can be tricky, but they don't rhyme. Lake and same, they don't rhyme. Okay, so keep those sort of things in your mind. You can pause this video um, and even take um, photos or notes on them. Think about things that rhyme as we get started in thinking about writing poems that rhyme. And, and those are helpful tips. Okay. We're going to start thinking about patterns. Okay. So we have an idea of what rhymes and what doesn't. And maybe one of the easiest ways that we can think about poetry is through thinking about the lens of a quatrain. And a quatrain is a poem or a stanza that's written with four lines. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. And they follow a pattern. And their pattern is usually A, B, A, B, or A, A, B, A, or A, A, B, B, or A, B, C, B. And I know maybe that'll be just a bit confusing right now, but I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. Are you ready? Take a look at this poem, okay? It's about a robin. Notice how the top has four lines. So that stanza has four lines, and your poem can end right there. But you can also add more to it. And I've put some of the pattern letters at the other side, and, and I'm going to read it to you, and we're going to talk about it, okay? So get ready. So I want you to listen to the poem. I want you to listen to the rhyme. And then I want you to think about that word pattern, okay? A robin sitting in a tree, turned her head and winked at me. She sang a song as if to say, I'm glad to see you here. Okay, so can you look at the last word in each line? So you're looking at the word tree, me, say, and today. Hmm. Can you find words that sound the same? You're right. Tree and me sound the same. So that would be one group. That would be an A group. That's what you'd start with. So you've got an A, A pattern. But the third line that has the word say has a different pattern, has a different sound. So that would become B. Say and today, they sound the same. So today would then be part of the same pattern family. And that's how you get an A, A, B, B. And when you write your poems, you can have that kind of a pattern. But in the same poem, in the next stanza, in the next four lines, there's a, there's a different pattern. And that's okay too. All right. So I'm going to continue reading the poem and start from the top. A robin sitting in a tree turned her head and winked at me. She sang a song as if to say, I'm glad to see you here today. There is nothing quite so peaceful as the sound of gentle rain, pitter pitter patting against the window pane. Hmm. Look at that. So let's look at the four lines again. Let's look at that last word and let's see where we find the pattern. Peaceful. Rain. Do they rhyme? They don't. So peaceful would be our A and rain would represent our new, our new pattern a letter, B. Let's see if the third line rhymes with either of those words. Patting. Nope, so that would be your C. The last word in the fourth line, we're looking at the word pain. Pain. Does it rhyme with peaceful? So it would not join the A. Does it rhyme with rain? Pain, rain. It does. So that pattern there is A, B, C, 
and B. All right? And can we find rhyme in other places in poems? Absolutely. But today we're just going to give a bit of a focus on quatrain poems, and we're looking at the four patterns that we can have. The quatrain poems have four lines in each stanza, so in each part, right? And then they have a pattern. So that's a lot that we talked about today. We talked about what a rhyme is, what a rhyme is not. And we have to practice that. And we have to be poets that observe things and look around and try to think about it. And then we read a poem to start thinking about the patterns. The ABAB -A -B pattern, the AABA, -A -B, the AABB, -B, and the ABCB. -B. Hmm, it's a lot to take in. But we really would become great at it if we practice. So I'm going to show you one more poem. It's called The Little Turtle. And I'm not sure if you can see it really clearly, but this is one I want you to think about when we go off live. And this is part of the task that I want you to think about. I'm not going to ask you to write a poem, although you can certainly do that if you'd like. I'm going to ask you to look at two poems over the next couple of days. Um, you can look at poems that I'm going to give you, like The Little Turtle. Or you can look at poems that you have in your house, or you can work with someone in your family. Look for patterns in those poems and see if you can find them. So in this poem, The Little Turtle, I'm just going to read a bit of it, okay? There was a little turtle. He lived in a box. He swam in a puddle. He climbed on the rocks. Right? He snapped at a mosquito. He snapped at a flea. He snapped at a minnow, and he snapped at me. He caught the mosquito. He caught the flea. He caught the minnow, but he didn't catch me. Okay? If you like that poem, I want you to think about this poem. Paint pictures in your mind. Think about the feelings in these poems. Find the rhyme. And see if you could find the pattern that it might be using. Okay? The other poem that you can think about over the next couple of days is The Car Wash. It's another poem, okay? And if you want to get a clear picture of that poem, I'm going to show it to you there, right? And I'm going to ask you also to think about this poem, observe this poem, paint pictures in your minds about this poem, think of the feelings in this poem. Find the rhymes, find the patterns. So this one is called Car Wash. When I'm hungry, I eat cars. I can chew three at a time. Turning mud to sudsy bubbles. All day long, I swallow grime. My mouth hangs open every spring, luring cars to my garage with promises of shiny beauty, cleanliness, a deep massage. I love all my meals on wheels, antique and sporty, short and wide. I eat them up, I clean them up, I spit them out the other side. Okay, so those are the other two poems that I'd like you to think about. And I hope that you send us some feedback on the patterns you found and the rhymes that you thought of. Okay. Right, so that's it for today. Please use these poems, or if you want to go about and find other ones, please do so. Think about them, and then when we join together again at the end of this week, we're going to start thinking about how we can make our own poems. I encourage and invite you to start um, using your poetry file to start being a poet who observes and think about words that rhyme. You can use index cards. You can use a brainstorm pad and just start thinking about words and finding others that might rhyme with them. Think about words that are sound the same. They might be spelled a little bit differently. Get our minds ready to think about rhyming together. Um, and on Friday, we'll look at ways that we can form poems that indeed do rhyme. So I look forward to hearing from you um, about the patterns and rhymes that you found and possibly you can post um, some poems that you found on your own. For next time, for next time I can tell you you've got a message from Lisa. Um, she's asking you to bring in some items 
that you can find in nature if possible. There's a message from Susan as well, and she's asking you to send her an email. Share your questions and wonderings with her. What thoughts do you have about changes in your life and in your routine? So for today, three tasks. Choose the ones that you find uh, most gripping to you. Do think about poems that rhyme today. Do have a look at reading these again on your own um, and look for the patterns um, and look for the rhymes. Think about Lisa and think about nature, uh, things in nature. And if you've got any questions that you'd like to ask Susan, she's more than happy to receive them and to reply to them. And just before I go, I, um, I'd like to just um, send you some wishes. May today eagerly greet you and those you love too with adventure and excitement to follow you through and through. I hope you and your perfect day today. I hope you find patterns and fun. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.